Thank you. Back into session, please. Okay. Call on the tellers for the Mark Protection Committee election to give their report, please. The first round was Donald. The second round was Judy. And the third round was Stephen. Thank you. We have the gory details. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'll pass those to the secretary for the minutes. Thank. <laughs> tell us. Thank Move you very to destroy much. Destroy the ballots. Thank yeah. Second, second. Any objection to destroying ballots? Seeing none, they will be destroyed after the meeting. And congratulations to the winners. Right. We have two items of business now. Uh, D6 and D7. Uh, they're both pretty small. The first one, item D6, has five minutes, just adds or comic to the title of 337. Does anybody wish to speak for this motion? Which one are we doing now? D6. I remain Andrew Adams. Uh, I was part of the uh, Hugo Discussion Committee from the last year. Um, this was uh, an item that came up by one of the um, comics uh, authors who was part of our discussions, and he felt very strongly that the description of graphic story amongst the um, comic authors and artist community um, felt disrespectful to their art form, where they mostly call them comics. Um, I was part of the uh, business meetings that passed this um, Hugo category, and I'm aware that that was absolutely not our intent when we called it graphic story. Um, I don't actually think that we're changing the um, content of this category at all. We are simply aligning it to be more respectful of the artists that, uh, uh, who are eligible for this work. Um, while maintaining the breadth that was the intent when we named it Graphic Story in the first place. So I, I heartily recommend that, that we adopt this change. Thank you. Anybody wish to speak against this motion? Seeing no... Ah, one, mo one speaker. Elliot Mitchell. Um, may maybe I am just reading this in a weird way, but I, I feel that the Constitution should remain with graphic stories to avoid the comedy um, reading of that, whereas it could be a clarification in all the advertising in, of this that it's a comic. Thank you. Any further speakers in favor of the motion? Cliff. I remain Cliff Dunn. Uh, that is why we did not go for best comic or graphic story because we felt that would engender the confusion you're thinking of. We went with the phrasing in question because it means graphic story or comic, comic having a general understanding being a certain form of visual medium. Thank you. Any speakers against? Further speaker for? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. Those in favour of passing this the first time, please show. Those against? Few. Motion is passed and we'll go to uh, next year in Dublin. <coughs> Somebody has pinched my pen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's all right. Right. Yes. We have one further item at this point, item D7, notability still matters. We have five minutes on it, and it merely tidies up some uh, infelicities related to EPH and making sure that we report all the stuff uh, as we always have. And wish to speak in favour of this motion? Dave, as a maker. My name is Dave McCarty. I am this year's Hugo Administrator. 
um, when we adopted EPH, we changed the reporting rules for nominations to say reporting the last 10 rounds of nominations, uh, last 10 elimination rounds in EPH, which will report 16 items, which is roughly the 15 items that we had been reporting previously. But we had an additional criteria prior to this that said that items that were not on at least 5% of the ballots may be omitted from, from the reporting so that you didn't have to report long tail items of lots of things getting single digit uh, nominations. As a Hugo administrator of the Retro Hugos, I have a wonderful list of data with lots of single digit nominations and it just doesn't look good to me to report that way. As the administrator, I'd prefer not to report that. And it used to be under the administrator's power. I believe that this wasn't done purposefully. I think we just missed putting the notability check in when we adopted the EPH language. And I think that we should put it back in so that our current rules are more in line with what we've done historically. Thank you, Dave. Any speakers against this motion? Kate. Sorry, I'm shorter than Dave. Uh, I'm Kate Secor, and I have concerns about this because I think that as the field has become more diverse, and as there are more markets for things like short stories, we are gonna see wider splits in the voting. We are gonna see more things in the long tail. That doesn't make them less worthy. It just means that there's more stuff for us to celebrate. I would hate for us to not be pointing people towards those works just because in a fee, you know in one year there were several hundred things that people wanted to nominate. Our field is awesome and it's getting bigger and we should be celebrating that even if it means that some things are not getting the votes that they might have gotten because of that widespread. Speech in favor of the motion. Andrew. And still Andrew Adams. Um, I'm sympathetic to Kate's points, but I believe the uh, optional wording in the amendment uh, deals with that. Um, I think very specifically Dave's point about things which get one or two or maybe three, particularly in the, in the bigger categories like, uh, where we have large numbers of nominations like novel, um, are not worth reporting. Those things which do get a significant number which, but which would fall out are at the administrator's discretion and I think we should trust our administrators to know the difference between something which is useful information and celebratory information and just noise in the machine and that's what Dave's proposed is doing it's giving the administrators the power to give us good information thank you speech against with the, with the <laughs> waving the banner <laughs> Joe Van Eckern I was last year's Hugo packet coordinator and in that role I got to see a great deal of the behind the scenes sausage making under Hugo <coughs> administrator Nicholas White and had quite a few discussions with him about how things worked out and what decisions were made and why they were made. I disagree with this amendment because I think we're at the point in terms of participation where the 5% is really not an issue anymore. If we've got somebody at the end of that 10 rounds, they're gonna be pretty close to 5% if they don't quite make it. I don't think that we're getting into the trivial one or two nominations area as far as that long tail. And I'd really like to see, as Kate says, those extra entries on that list because it's an important record of our history of the things that we felt important enough to nominate. Thank you. Thank you. Speech in favor. Don. Hmm? I'm Donald Eastlake. Uh, I move to strike out five and insert four in this amendment. Move to strike out five and insert four. Uh, for the percentages, you mean, right. Speech in favor of five, uh, four percent? Don, do you wish to speak to? Uh, I, I think that the, that the uh, five percent is a little too harsh and that uh, four percent would be better. Speech against four percent? Seeing none. Speech, any more speeches on four percent, five percent? 
We will vote on the amendment then. Those in favour of the amendment to move to 4%, please show. Those against the 4%, please show. The ayes have it. The motion now 4% of the ballots cast in each category. Right. Um, back to the main motion. Speech against. Anyone wish to speak against? Cliff. Mr. Chairman, I'm still Cliff Dunn. I believe that aside from the several of the fan categories, the single digit nomination issue is primarily an artifact at this point of the uh, retro Hugos, which let's face it, have far fewer nominations in general than do the uh, main Hugos. I also think that with the nature of EPH being after a fashion a runoff system, it is valuable to have at least the last handful of rounds regardless of the numbers involved simply so we can see how those final distributions took place. And I would finally note that the 5% element, I believe, was more or less repealed separate from EPH in the form of the 5% solution, although they occurred at about the same time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Speech in favor, Ben. Ben Yallo. It's not just the fan you goes. It shows up all over the place in the retros, for example. If we take a look at best editor, which certainly is not a minor category, this year we had John Campbell with 75 nominations. The number two was Dorothy McElwraith with eight. And by the time you get down to the eighth place editor, not the 15th, the eighth place editor, we're looking at Alden Norton four. Thank you. Time four has expired. Does anybody wish to speak against? 15 seconds against. You have 15 seconds. I have an... I move to amend the proposal to, to strike out 4% 4 per, 4 of the ballots in, in both places where it appears and insert in, in lieu thereof not, not nine, ba nine ballots. Please state your name. Mar uh, Martin Pine, QINA. Is there a second for that? Uh, I make the the objection raises that we're reporting single single ballot number single digit ballot numbers. This amendment would say you don't have to report single ba digit ballot numbers. Judy, are you seconding? I, I move that we extend debate. Yep. Excuse me, Martin. Can you bring me the the motion? The motion is to strike five percent and insert nine. Nine percent? Nine ballots. Four percent. Four percent. Sorry, it's four percent at the moment. Four percent and it's nine ballots. Nine ballots. Okay. Five percent of the is replaced by nine. Yeah. Four percent. Right. I believe it's replacing the words five percent of the that those three tokens are replaced by nine. To clarify, yeah. you want it to be fewer than nine ballots, not nine ballots or fewer. Fewer Fewer than, uh, fewer than 10 ballots. It still says at least, ballots. right. Okay. I ask unanimous consent to modify my amendment to state fewer than 10 ballots. Yeah. 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 Good. Right, we have a motion to extend debate times. Why, how much? Two minutes. Side. Four minutes. Right, <laughs> we motion to extend debate time by four minutes total. Those in favor of extending debate time, please show. Plenty. Those against extending debate time? Fewer. Debate time is extended. Another two minutes on each side, please, Paul. Right. We have an amendment to strike 4% of the and insert 10. No, fewer uh, than 10. Fewer than 10. Yeah. Fewer than is still there. It replaces 5% of the with 10. It's different in, different in the two different places. We can fix it up. Yes. <laughs> Right, speech against putting a uh, firm number in and leaving. Dr. Perianne. I am Perianne Lurie. That's P E R R I A N N E L U R I E. 
Um, I think 10 is a totally arbitrary number uh, because we're using base 10, but that doesn't make any sense to me. The percentage of the total number of ballots makes a lot more sense to me because it, it, it indicates how many people actually nominated in that category. Thank you. Speech in favor of moving to 10 ballots? Speech against? Move up. Ah. Elspeth? Um, I think using 10 ballots actually does give a better idea of how many nominations there were. Um, a percentage can be any number, whereas saying 10 ballots clarifies to people that we are not deliberately excluding um, the, the bottom percentage. It's just not worth going below 10 ballots. And so I think this is easier to understand and less controversial just to go to the number of ballots. Thank you. Speech in favor. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yep. Yes. Point of information okay. from. Maybe. Gary Blog, point of information from either Dave McCarty or any other Hugo administrator. How often on the final ballots are there the the the, you know, the, the who makes the final ballot? Is it ten or fewer? You know, they they to get they, they are on the final ballot, but they've gotten less than ten nominations. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, that is debate. No, I have mean, yes. it is. Mm. That is mm. debate, Mr. Chairman. You are not allowed to questions randomly unless you're using your debate time. That was Kevin it. Stanley. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that should be charged. Does anyone need Which Kevin's point repeated? Four against. Four, I think. All right. Anybody wish to speak uh, either to Gary's inquiry or uh, to uh, against the motion to go to 10? Donald, this is Donald Eastlake. I just wanted to point out that this is still at the option of the administrator. So, you know, if the uh, uh, threshold is a little higher, then uh, the administrator is not required to, to omit these from the reports. Uh, so I think it's going with 4% is the best way. Thank you. Anyone wish to speak in favor of 10? Joshua at the back. So two things. Uh, one, as the long tail gets longer, um, the, uh, the numbers involved uh, get larger, but the kinds of things we're ignoring and how significant they are get, um, also get um, bigger. And therefore, having a specific number um, rather than a percentage allows us to not be so, e so easily and quickly um, ignore people on the long tail that are still double digit numbers. And the other thing is that literally the objection is that um, we are putting things that only have a handful of votes. A hand. Ten is what our hands hold. Thank you. Uh, speech against ten. Dave. If people look at the his my name is Dave McCarty. If uh, people pour through the history of the awards in the HugoAwards.org and look at the statistics that have been released year by year, you'll see that our participation varies from year to year and by category and category. Um, I think putting a hard number in does not serve well. I think a percentage is the better way to go. Um, however, I. I, while I am um, asking to put in the ability to limit by a percentage, I will also say this, that I'm asking this as an administrator who has always reported more than was required. I always show things that go beyond the limit. I just think that we need to trust the administrators to find a point where it makes sense to stop if things get very small. 
the speech in favour of going to 10, in favour of the amendment? I move seconds. to move to the previous yes. question. Okay. Um, I will ignore that because there's only five seconds left. 25 seconds, 25 seconds, 25 seconds 25 left. Seconds. Anybody wish to speak? And seeing none, the amendment to uh, delete 4% and put in 10. Those in favour of 10, please show. 10 ballots. 10 ballots, yes. Those against making the substitution, many. Uh, amendment fails. Does anybody still wish to speak to the... Uh, Main motion. Seeing none, a vote on the main motion. Notability still matters with 4% in place of 5% as printed. Those in favour of this motion, please show. Thank you. Those against, please show. Ayes have it. Thank you. That will go to Dublin next year for ratification. That concludes the current. Uh, Agenda. We will have two items of actual business tomorrow. There was the uh, motion D5, uh, professional fan Art Hugo's that was uh, artist Hugo's that was uh, postponed definitely to after the uh, site selection reports. And Mr. Yallo and, and Chris Hensley have submitted a further uh, standing rule amendment that will come up. Kate. Hi, I'm Kate Secor. I just wanted to clarify something. It was my understanding that we postponed the uh, remaining new business until 11 a.m. specifically, not until whenever we were done with discussing site selection. It will not come up before 11. Okay. If site selection runs over, it may come up after 11. I was worried about it Yeah. <laughs> We'll just have a longer recess. <laughs> right, sign up sheets for the Hugo Awards Study Committee and the Remote Participation Committee are up here if people want to come up and sign. Otherwise, we stand adjourned till tomorrow at about 10 o'clock. Thank you very much. Those of you who have yellow card.